everyone. Welcome to a bracket match of pod racing between Nacho Bredo and Dubai Guy for round one of the bracket. I am Ronnie and co-commentating with me today. Yeah, hello everyone. We're starting on Metal Star 100. This match, I'm not so sure who's going to win it. These these players are about evenly matched. They're really solid, both of them. So I don't know who's going to really win this one at the moment. So Malastar 100 is pretty interesting track. Uh, there's a couple of hard spots, primarily the hairpin at the end of each lap, which uh, is basically a full 180 degree turn with very little margin for error. So you'll be seeing our runners play with very low traction uh, to allow them to to more effectively get around that corner. Uh, I believe Dwight Guy actually doesn't um, really use the sliding uh, control, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, and that will actually be a little bit suboptimal here. Yeah, you're right um, on the lowest of the low. Lowest frame rate 24 at the lowest traction R20. Uh, I, I'm not hearing audio from the, the stream. Is that my problem? Or I'm not yeah, hearing it either. We forgot to do the audio check. Oops. Oops, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see uh, Dwight taking that, that hairpin not perfectly. Actually, uh, Nacho has already taken a tremendous lead just through cleaner racing, pretty much. Three seconds is a lot on this track. Yeah, uh, and you're running. Whoa, that was a big bonk Nacho took, but won't be quite enough for Dry Guy to catch up. Indeed. Uh, Nacho's on a bit better heat as well. You want to be as high heat as possible coming into the hairpin. Uh, and speaking. Dry Guy crashes because he doesn't know how to slide. Yeah. He doesn't really use the slide uh, oh. control, which is uh, one of the more important ones, and it really hurts on certain parts like that. I, running this game for so long, you're on slide at least half the time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I use it a lot, uh, as most players do. Um... But actually, surprisingly, Dwight gets pretty solid times a lot of the time, even without uh, without it. I believe he is a, he has the lowest death rate uh, of any of the runners in the tournament. I could be wrong about that, but he's definitely pretty low. And yeah, you can see takes a lot of engine damage there. Uh, One forty six is a fantastic time, and they've even gone ahead and they've uh, begun their uh, perma bands. Yeah. We Nacho already know banned... what they are. Yep. Nacho has banned Bunta Classic. Dwai has banned Fire Mountain. Nacho has banned Adobe Mountain Run. And Dwai Guy has banned Grabvine Gateway. So those are the tracks that will not be allowed for the rest of the match. Also, and also, it's pretty smart to ban F Grabvine Gateway and Fire Mountain Rally against Nacho because he's... Because uh, he's fond of banning Bullseye and going to there. Indeed. It's, uh, yeah, both of those tracks are quite difficult. Um, makes sense to ban them, Buddha Classic and Adobe Mountain Run. So pretty standard bans. Um, so the temporary bans have come in. Bulls Ruer and Baru Coast. And Dwight Guy has picked Bumpy's Breakers and is forcing no Ben. And banning Bulls, so that means Beto is the fastest here. Yeah, no Bulls, no Ben. So Aldar Beto is pretty much the, the pick here. Going with Bullseye. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> pick. And I hope Nacho doesn't forget to remove the spectator sheet. Uh... as that could result in his disqualification on this track if he fails to uh, remove it before the race begins. 
Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, so there seems to be a problem that Nacho has uh, not taken down the sheet. Yeah, um, I'm in with him in chat. Uh oh. I'm not sure what the ruling is if he is it if he starts the race without uh with the sheet up is that automatically a dnf i don't think so hmm there he goes okay i don't know we gave the countdown but it looks like i'm gonna ask why if he could restart since i'm not sure if i'm not sure if he'll see it is the problem i'm pinging him Oh, yeah. no. Okay. This is definitely not go. the ideal situation. No, not at all. Looks like, though, we got... the first 30 seconds with a track of this long probably will be sufficient. Well, uh... Assume Dwi assuming the runs are real, Dwight makes it through the shortcut very, very nicely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this I is think the area. Where, real. Yeah, I think this is the area where Bullseye is going to be really helpful. Uh, I'm not even sure I should bother sinking them because they're just so far apart. Uh, yeah, they would just take much longer than it's worth. Yeah, like a 40 second sink pause. That just doesn't. That would not be fun for our viewers. 140. No. Hopefully, we get these uh, difficulties ironed out. Uh, and it looks like we've got audio. Yes. We're using Nacho's audio. So. I was able to get that sorted, thankfully. Uh, so Dry Guy did 140. And solid lap with, uh, with Bullseye. Let's see what Nacho gets with Vito. He should get uh, probably around the same, it looks like. Looks like more. Nacho is slightly behind Dry Guy here. Yeah, a little bit behind could possibly be due to uh, a little bit sloppier driving uh, or not using his boost as much as he should, underheating too much. Well, Dry Guy also is fond of using Bullseye, so he's really good with him. I don't think Nacho is used to Beto outside of amateur no upgrade. Into the warning. Ooh. Yeah. I'm Massive gonna... engine damage. This track is long enough. I'm going to actually, I'm going to go ahead and sink them anyway. Uh, this is going to be a really long sink pause on Dwai Guy, but it's it's quite a long track, so I think it should be fine. Uh, and I've got reassurance from Ace who DM'd me saying that as well, so. Yeah. yeah. Just watching Nutshell catch up. And his shortcut. Oh, he does it! <laughs> Shreds an engine off on that a shortcut. Very easy to do. That's a difficult section to be sure. And it makes that it crash the, uh... puts him massively behind. Yeah, He's now we like, can really see just how far behind he is. Like, uh, it's like five or ten seconds. Consistent. Yeah, dying with Aldarbido is extremely bad mm -hmm. because of his terrible acceleration. Uh, he has some of the worst acceleration in the whole game. So getting back up to speed mm -hmm. after dying uh, is takes a lot of time. So every death is is very costly. Actually, the worst acceleration the game with Rats Terrell. Yeah. It's 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 not good. And even fully upgraded, Neva Key and Arc Bumpy Reese still beat him in acceleration without upgrades. Yeah, that's a that's a statistic. <laughs> that's uh, not something you want to hear. You don't want to hear Arc Bumpy Reese is a. Uh... Uh, better acceleration than you with no upgrades. Although, to be fair, Arc Bumpy Roos does accelerate very, very quickly. Almost too quickly. 
Incidentally, he was one of my favorite pods to use in multiplayer for that reason, because you just jump out in front of everybody, like, really fast at the beginning of every race. Oh! oh! He takes the death on that shortcut. That's actually going to bring even it now. back. Yeah, that's going to allow Nacho to bring it back. And given Beto's boosting capabilities are quite a bit faster... Yeah, he just pulled ahead at the last second. Nacho is going to take the lead here. And it's going to be very close. This will be a photo finish. And we've got Beto taking it by about two seconds. Okay, Bulls ban. Same bans, Bulls Ruhr and Baru Coast. Ooh, Executioner has been picked. So see up Ben Mir. Yes, almost certainly. Executioner I, is, in my opinion, uh, one of the more underrated tracks in this game. People don't seem to like it very much, and uh, I think that's a bit sad, because I think it's a fine track. Uh, it can be frustrating, but, I mean, basically every track in this game can be. Yeah, this track is like... It's r the hardest part of it, where I like to say the track earns its name, is in this tube drop. And the fastest way involves tilting or going up a wall. And tilting is one of the worst possible things you can do in the Uber 4 tubes. Yes, indeed. It, it can really mess you up. It can really throw you off, especially depending on uh, frame rate. Uh, on low frame rates, it can just fling you all over the place and make it impossible to control. They're tough tracks, for sure. Mm -hmm. The safest strategy is to uh, slam hard on the brakes when you're going at the tube drop, but that doesn't really do well if you're speed running it. Mm hmm Exactly. If you're trying to go for the <laughs> fastest time, you've got to do some risky stuff, and that can be uh, really, really tough. Just a little bit of warm-up here. You can see that there are... The beginning parts of this track are pretty, pretty easy, usually. Uh, you shouldn't have much trouble on this track in the first... Uh, 30 seconds or so usually but after that it can get pretty tough yeah and as with any speed run you shouldn't have much trouble means you're sometimes going to just mess it up anyway uh, <laughs> that's why we love speed running right and yeah you can see an example of a uvo tube being very scary there as nacho dies but it's a warm up so it doesn't really matter and now here comes the race. Though that exit from that tube usually can be is usually pretty deadly regardless of frame rate. Yeah. It's it's it can be very brutal. It like just smashes you into the ground. Nasty. And Nacho seems to be taking a pretty solid line here. He seems to have a little bit of a lead. Um, coming out of this section, uh, with the red carpeting. But Dwai is really right next to him. It's, it's, uh, not a big lead. It is a bit faster Whoa! to- Oh! It's not faster to die, but it is a bit faster to jump off the wall into the tube. The way Nacho did it. I'm amazed Dwai guy survived that. The way he was angled, it looked like he was just gonna crash on exit. Yeah. And uh, with that as well, Dwai is going to take a big lead in terms of heat as well. He's not going to have to... They're about even in heat, though. Yeah, there was that long straight, so they managed to stay around the same. But yeah, Dwai is a big lead now. Doesn't look that big to me. Only about maybe a second or two. Yeah, it's because it's uh, Nacho boosted through the uh, whole, basically the whole tube. He's, he's about yep, two about two seconds. And 119 is really solid for Executioner Fall. Yeah, that's that's very, very good. A really solid time on Executioner Fall starts around the four minute mark. Yeah, sub four is a quite a fun, fun accomplishment on this this track and tournament. And yeah, we're gonna see Nacho jump off the wall again to get back Ooh, in. Oh, crashes dies. in the entries! It is a bit risky to do that. 
Uh, thanks. And Easter Egg, I survived again, which I have no idea why. Uh, I think it's mainly. No, it crashes on the rotating gate. That's worse than the tube. Oh, they both crashed there. It's oh, even again. There. So Dwight is still going to hold out a little bit of a lead because they both crashed on the, the door. I don't usually see racers crash on the same spot like that. Yeah, it's not very common. <laughs> and uh, it's not very common for Dwight guy to die at all, but uh, I guess that uh, can get anybody. You still got a very solid time. 123 seconds. with a bad. death. 124. With two deaths. So Nacho seems to be maybe on the verge of clawing it back if he can avoid dying on this third lap. He might have a chance to take the win uh, if he just races a bit cleaner and uh, manages heat better and such. Okay. He makes it into oh. the tube just fine. No, Toy Guy crashes oh, in the tube now. And that's going to give Nacho just about the lead, I should think. Yes, indeed. Easily the lead. Right out of space is the crash. Yeah. It's not a very big lead, so if Nacho messes up on the very end here and dies, he can lose it, but I really don't expect him to. And... Nacho 402, 402 despite several deaths. Yeah, that's fast. Okay. Mars Groban, Punta Barucos, and Ando Prime Centrum is going to be the next one. Yeah. Enterprise Centrum is a really fun track. In my opinion, it's a uh, one of my favorites and yeah, it it's got a couple of uh hairy sections where you can you can mess up. But it's also got some cool tricks and uh it's not terribly long either. Though there's so many paths that if you don't know the right path, you'll it's an automatic loss. Yeah. Yeah, the the optimal path is not uh, super obvious, so it really does come down a lot to familiarity with the track. Off they go. Right. So the first sort of section that you kind of have to think about is this section here where you break the, that ice. It's possible to die on it, so you have to hit it sort of on the side. But the real beginning of the track is this hairpin section here. And Dwight Guy not of... sliding is really going to hurt him. Yeah, and that's also one of the few parts of the game where you have to use the brakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually Dwight Guy taking a bit of a longer path there. Yeah, Dwight taking not the optimal path through the city. That's going to lose him time on top of uh, having to slow down very significantly on the hairpins so that he doesn't crash on them. 54, 54. from Nacho, very solid. And a 56 Six. is not bad. Nacho maxing out his heat. Very good. You want to have as much heat as you can by this hairpin here. Because you cool down quite a bit through it. And very clean from Nacho. Dwight Guy makes it through as well, a bit faster than last time. And as you can see with Nacho, he flies through a bit of a, like an arch there. There's just a no, no collision there for some reason, so you can just fly through it. I'm not sure about Dwight taking this this uh, path through the city. Ooh, cut fire! Ooh, yeah, and it's not a lucky repair either. It's possible to get a repair where you just instantly put it out, but Nacho's had a bit of trouble there. 
Might not slow him down enough for Dubai to claw back into it, but it is going to slow him a little bit. Hairpin part three. Nacho makes it through, but maybe not as fast as he wanted. Dubai makes it through as well. And it looks like this is uh, Nacho going to take it. There's not really any major death spots from this point on. So, Nacho should take the win here. And he does with a 238, which is a very, very solid time on this track. 243 is not bad at all, but yeah, fast. Nacho actually, uh, quite dominant in this this match maybe a little bit unexpected i think uh i expected dwy guy to maybe do a, a bit more and winning a few more tracks but who knows we'll see uh same temp bands as ruin and baru coast and death Row's revenge with ben band and no upgrades Ooh, interesting choice taking nacho to no upgrades the fastest part here will be Sabulba. Yep, with no Ben and no Bulls, Sabulba is the fastest part here with no upgrades. I wonder if he practiced Sabulba Death Row's Revenge for this match point sort of scenario, but who knows? We'll find out uh, when we get to watching him. Is not just picking Aldar Beto here. Interesting. Oi! Uh, not just probably gonna be at a big disadvantage with this. Yeah, Beto, because of his poor acceleration and uh, doesn't, I believe, in with no upgrades, Sebulba's boost is actually a little bit faster. No, uh, he. No, his booster. He tops his tops his raw top speed without upgrade speedo is 517. Sabulba is 600. But ah. Beto, Beto peaks at theoretical boost max is 867, while Sabulba is 785. But because of the fact that you boost so little and no upgrades, it means the cruising speed of Sabulba is going to probably pull him ahead if everything comes out well. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And... Off they go. Now... Now we can't really be sh Oh! Crashes right away with Beto! That is and the that's, worst! That's gonna hurt so much with no upgrades at all. Look at that. Just to get back to boosting took like basically four or five seconds. That could do it right there that, on this, honestly. Yeah, and no upgrade Beto is the worst of the worst with acceleration. Yeah, that's that's as bad as it gets in the entire game. That's like possibly one of the worst possible deaths you could ever take right at the beginning with no upgrade Beto, which meant he was a combination of underheat plus the worst acceleration in the game. Yeah, Sebulba is going to jump lead here. That's going to be very, very significant. A 102 first lap, quite solid, I think, for no upgrades. Yeah, but you can see that death was about six seconds, which is really brutal. And once Vito's tapped out a boost, Sebulba's just going to pull ahead. Yep. Yeah, this is this is Dwy guy's uh, match to lose or race to lose at this point. Uh, As you can just... see, yeah, if he can just consistently keep going through it, <sighs> yeah, you can see their cruising speeds there. Like Dwy is like eighty units faster than Nacho. and that is very significant. 
I think Dwight could honestly afford a death or two at this point. Yeah, 58 second lap. Versus a 59, so yeah, another full second gain for Dwight guy. Coming to about a seven second lead in total. Now it's totally it eighty. It's yeah, totally eighty units now. And there you see, not just tapping out his boost, which means that he cannot use it. Yeah, exactly. If he, Beto doesn't have the greatest cooling either, and Dwight is gonna Three minutes. easily take it. Three minutes flat. Three oh six for Nacho. Now, Basically, all of that was the death, and Dwight will not be shut out. But now it's Nacho's turn to pick a track. Nacho has been batting bowls, bang this, spice mine run. <laughs> yep, it's spice mine run, no forces, no bowls. We'll get a Ben mirror. And um, yeah, I think this is. Uh, I think this is probably going to be Nacho's win here. Yeah, but now Dry's totally at the mercy of Nacho now. Spice Mine Run is an interesting track. Uh, it's not terribly difficult. Uh, it's pretty easy to get your deathless three lap. However, it is really, really difficult to optimize. The ideal fastest boosting pattern and exact course are not the most obvious and quite difficult to execute you can basically you can lose a couple of seconds just by being a little bit sloppy overall which you can do basically anywhere on any track but here it's especially noticeable and it's especially easy to be sloppy with the booster yeah it's really easy to just overuse it on this track especially on like the conveyor belt uh yeah there are some tricks with this track so being very practiced with it is going to put you ahead and i think that's nacho's pb there uh 341 uh it's quite good no this is one of his favorite tracks the counter pick too he's very fond of forcing no upgrades on here too yeah And Nacho taking the lead. They actually seem to be pretty even. Whoa, oh, he dies! No. That's not good. That's really not good. It's not the worst place to die. But it does, it's, yeah, it's still a bad spot. And that's going to give Dwy a pretty, pretty solid lead. It uh -oh. might- Oh, he held Dwy the takes the so greedily! He held the. He was too greedy with the boost there. Oh, oh and that's a crash right again. This, this is, is nuts. What is happening? This is like uh, the most deadly spice mine run I've ever seen. Three deaths between the two runners in the first lap. That's pretty uh, interesting. It doesn't happen with, very much. With more deaths coming from the favorite to win. Yeah. So both of them, uh, not exactly doing good on heat or timings. Well, that means we don't, they don't have to worry about the precarious dozer spot on the final lap. Yeah. Yeah, but it is, uh, pretty much a dead heat. I think Dwy was maybe two tenths faster, I think, on that first lap. It looks like he braked. 
Yeah, and not sure having a little bit better heat coming into the conveyor belt. You don't want to be boosting across this because you want to maximize how much time you spend on fast terrain. And just a little bit of watching out for the cart here. Oh, he crashed oh, into the mine cart! Why hits it? Yeah, it's one of the tricky parts of this track is making sure you know where that cart's going to be on each lap. Especially if you die uh, and it messes up the timing. I, I usually on this track to be safe, try to go for the outer portion on the right to avoid the mine cart crashing. Yeah, but that, that also is a little bit slower because it's uh, the best way would be to take the inside of yeah. every corner if you can. So it's a trade-off between safety and speed. But yeah, now you, now you can see Nacho has a very significant lead just based on that and the cleaner driving overall. Yeah, the dozer is nowhere near uh, the dangerous spot. Yeah, and this should be, this should be, unless Nacho messes up really badly, this should be his track. Coming into the final stretch of the, or not the final stretch, but now we're going to be coming up with the final stretch. <laughs> this is the uh, final hairpin area once you get out of this tube. here and looking very clean for Nacho and he might uh, he gets yeah. it 351 with two deaths is very good and Dwai is going to come in with maybe a 401 or 402 401 and that's Nacho's win GG's to the runners who will be joining us momentarily for interview. And welcome the runner. Hello. Hello. Howdy, howdy. Well played. Yeah, there were some very interesting parts to those races. A lot more deaths than I expected. <laughs> Me Same. <too. laughs> Spice Mine Run especially. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Like, I just crashed and then suddenly I just wasn't in the game and felt I crashed two more times. <laughs> it was not yeah. enjoyable. Yeah, I think I crashed two or three times there too. Uh, it was, yeah, uh, you both crashed a few times. Yeah, I got a 113 second lap. So like, I was I was very I was playing very aggressive because all my crashes I think were lap one. Yeah, so I, was, I was just I was just panicking like okay I, I just gotta go. <laughs> And, I... and also, and also, why did you go with Beto with Death Rose when you could have gone with Saboba? I don't know. Is Saboba faster? <laughs> it's uh, way well, faster! Yeah, it's quite a bit faster, especially when you, you know, died and lost six seconds. Uh, yeah, I died once right at the beginning. I feel like yeah. it would have been pretty even if, it, if I didn't die. No, Saboba's actually a bit faster than Beto! Yeah, his cruise speed upgrades. was about uh, was about eighty units yeah. faster than than uh, Beto's. Were we like six seconds apart anyway? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it would have been pretty close if you didn't crash. It would have been yeah. kind of close, but I, I think that would have been uh, still uh, Dwight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just so used. Have... I'm so used to Beto, no upgrades. <laughs> I didn't even think about Sabobo. I'm like, uh, I think he's fourth. I'm gonna go Beto. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, congrats to to Nacho on the win. Thank you. Yeah, congrats, uh, Nacho. So your your next opponent will be the winner of Metallica versus the Cylinder. Uh, so that'll be an interesting match as well. Uh, maybe a little Absolutely. less interesting than this one, but uh, <laughs> probably still have some good moments. Hopefully, they'll be they'll give us some interesting stuff. Uh. Usually the first round of the bracket is uh, has more more one-sided matches than the later rounds, um, because for example the uh, number one seeded player will take on the lowest seeded player, so 
so you know it can be pretty pretty bad so yeah i mean good uh good racing you guys put on a good show i think and uh can't wait to see how you guys do maybe maybe drive will pull off an awesome uh loser bracket run back <laughs> i'll um, sure try i'm very disappointed with my performance today <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, loser bracket runbacks are pretty cool. They feel fun to do. Uh, oh, absolutely. Make you feel good at the end of it. I mean, I guess going through the whole thing completely undefeated would be the best, but, you know, you can't have it all. All right. Uh, Thanks, guys, for coming. And, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, with that, I think we uh, should probably sign off now. Yeah, I think, we're, I think this is a wrap. Good luck, everyone. May the force be with you. Yep. Thank you, everyone.